the nigga Puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the f this nigga just said. <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this nigga, like, fuck it. Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is the shit, this is shit that goes on. Well, this is a little fruit, my puppy's a fruit pop. <laughs> Trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? You should sit out there for no reason. Yo, for you don't see accident pictures with me like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Look, look. Later you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Be real. Doing more than just talking about the sexual assault claims, 50 Cent is also shining a light on how other famous rappers were involved with Combs' shady behavior. Uh -huh. That he was Diddy's boy toy. Oh, <laughs> right. Wait, so this is. So, so, so Charlemagne said. It's not true, but I told after, true, after true, he bought true. up the stuff with you, I said, you know what 50 gonna say when he meets you? Oh, no, I don't know that that was going on. You know, I can't wait to run into him again. See, what you gonna say to him? Puffy was playing with your booty in Miami. <laughs> you know it was in Miami. <laughs> Yo, look, that's what James Cruz used to say all the time. Miami, Miami. He's like, Miami. I'm like, what's the matter? What you talking about, Miami? Goodness, what happened in Miami? After a fourth sexual assault claim was made against Combs, 50 Cent has come forward, declaring that the money from his planned documentary about Combs would go to help sexual assault victims. 50 Cent has announced that he will be executive producing the documentary on Diddy. Surviving Diddy, too much brother love can cost you. While doing so, 50 Cent is also naming rappers quite boldly, exposing Hollywood for what it really is. Now, now, Fifth, when you continuously call Puff gay, does that affect no. your relationships in Hollywood? I don't call, no, I don't call, I don't call him gay. I said, let I, me read it, let me read okay, it, read. Fifth. Oh my God. Sorry I can no longer That's help confused. you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow, then the thieves. In theaters, oh, that's why he says things. He doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. You know what I'm saying? Like he says something fabulous, and he goes, "Yo, no, we, no, but me and you, we ain't party. Like we need to party." What is he talking about? Oh, <laughs> that's going off. When it's people gone. say that to me, I get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> As expected, in a new documentary that Fifty Cent is working on, the rapper will talk about the problems that surround Diddy, the bad boy boss and reveal all the shady and sexually problematic things the other rappers have done for Combs. Sure, Has sure. anybody ever came up to you and tell you straight up, like, yo, 50, I don't fuck with you? Nope. It's so awesome. I slapped the shit out of him. <laughs> oh, look, oh, I'll have somebody else. You're not gonna slap nobody, Fifth. No, I'll have the shit slapped out of him. Yeah. You'll have the shit. Very, somebody very, else very fluently. <laughs> that, since the lawsuits and stuff started happening. The documentary is meant to shed light on Diddy as a disturbed person, and 50 Cent is in charge of producing it. And even though they have had an on and off feud for a long time, 50 Cent is putting more pressure on Diddy by releasing a list of rappers who are said to have had strange encounters with him. Well, you know, everyone is not, everyone is not actually gonna be prepared to, to take the time to actually utilize the information that's given to them. Like, if you pay attention and you actually keep whatever information is coming in front of you that you choose what's valuable but the things that you do here that are valuable if you make it your business to keep it even if you have to write it down so you have to say it to yourself or whatever and you just keep the person says something and you go what what did you just say hold on a second put in my phone and hold on to it until it becomes a part of you in the way you actually would express yourself at different points and then it'll you develop a more advanced presentation Reports say that 50 Cent's documentary will likely look into Diddy's claimed role in what he called freak-offs. The news comes from a case that Diddy's ex-girlfriend of 11 years, Cassie, filed. But where I'm at, the price of life, where I grew up at, the price of life is cheap. So if, if you got the money, if you got the bag, it's gonna happen. When you drop it, it's a go. So tell me who, who, is this the, 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 oh, you think I won't drop the bag? That's what you think? Nah, I, I, look, hey. You got to be kidding me. Like, I'm that's just, the easiest I'm thing I'm just in the world. asking. And then you say, and you got to get, and I got the team. I got to come, I got to, you're stronger than linebackers. My lawyer is the.
In her case against Diddy, Cassie made some disturbing claims showing a darker side to their relationship. Court papers show that Cassie says she wasn't just in a bad relationship. She says Diddy was also trafficking her to do what he called freak-offs. What you think about her saying that, you know, Diddy, he will only do music with Cassie when she would do freak-off sessions with him? Yo, that was crazy. And she said that it was heartbreaking to her that her music was the reason why they was freaking off. The music that she was writing, it was for Cassie to freak off with him. And she couldn't believe it. I didn't, I, and then she said that uh, in the interview, which was crazy, she said that Puff came to the house and tried to make the girl have sex with him. And she intervened and said, she don't have to have sex with you. And he said, she said, then I seen his monster. Like, I was like, he had a monster? She was like, yo, she said, I seen his monster. He just, his whole tone, his facial expression, everything just changed towards her. I was like, yo, that's crazy. She lucky. And you believe everything she's saying. You being around Diddy, you believe all this. You know, him giving her a black eye, you know, him not doing music with her unless she did a freak off session with him. You believe all this. Drugs, bruh. I'm, 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 be, I'm being totally honest, man. Like, I, I believe that when, when you on those type of drugs and shit like that with alcohol, that it caused those people to think like that. It, it's crazy, you know, for these women to be in fear of their life based on you trying to put that pressure on them like that. Man, somebody didn't call me. I didn't see, and so I'm stationed on, staying off my, my social devices. It's too much cooning and buffooning. Too much cooning and buffooning. And believe, and believe me, when I get my thoughts together, I'm gonna figure out a way to articulate myself. Cause this conversation ain't even for the whole world to hear. It's just for us. Believe me, they saying you cooning and buffooning. Oh, believe me. And they loving every minute of it. I'm telling y'all today, I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. If it ain't about going up, but about being positive, about getting some money, loving God, I ain't too much coonery. Buffoonery going on, the culture's getting killed. I'm not even saying nothing about it because I'm just so burnt out. According to Cassie, Diddy made her do these things by hiring male escorts who wore masks during private acts, so she didn't have a choice. According to the lawsuit, Diddy acted like a boss during these lessons and told Cassie what to do and when to do it. Well, I have questions. Yeah, what are your questions? glasses come off okay so I don't uh, I have been taken advantage of in my life as well right yeah, we talked about that yeah. okay but I don't uh, understand how anybody can make you do that like are the doors locked you can't leave I know these people got big mansions they're secluded sometimes you don't have good phone service but I don't see how anybody can make you unless you've got, and this is no shaming on, on Cassie. Yeah. Or anybody in that situation. I just don't understand. I don't understand how somebody could, like you could not make me fuck him. You, Can't and you're it. bigger than me yeah. and all that. You could not make me fuck him without tearing up this entire fucking room. Right. That's just me. Yeah. You can't make me do that. Unless there's a gun involved. So I don't understand how that happens. And then they're around for months and months and months. And years. years and years there and years. Like eight, eight years, I think. And then you go out in this per persona and you're smiling and you're an honest person. Like, I don't, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand how that works. I don't, I don't get that. Well, I talked to Boosie about this. Oh, and Lord. he feels that Cassie is either traumatized or she loved every minute. 
Also, if you think these are just some made-up events, major news outlets are covering them proving otherwise. Not to forget, high-class places, like the Trump International Hotel in New York City, were used for these events. Listen, that girl went through some tumultuous sh that she never thought that she would ever have to go through being in the music business. Do you understand that? I've I've been next to people who are top in the game in the music business. And they had said to me, yo, I had to suck a lot of to get to this position. You understand? They have said that. So I can imagine what that little girl went through with old boy. She ain't lying that thing because if she would have lied, he would have fought her tooth and nail. He would have fought her tooth and nail, bruh. Don't get it messed up, Art. He would have fought her tooth and nail. That little girl ain't lied nothing that, she ain't lied about none of that. Do you know what she's going through? She you know what she's gonna go through for the rest of her life? Her kids gonna go back and see this on the internet? Right, right. And she also said in this lawsuit, man, that, you know, Diddy, he, you know, he came off as a mentor, but later down the line, he became too controlling. My position on him, he was never a father figure, bro. You understand? He was a groomer. He was a, he was, a, he was, he was an addict. He was somebody that was a, what you, what you call those? I, I've lost all of my terminologies <laughs> than when I was working as a uh, a BCW or uh, a child abuse worker. But he was an individual that preyed on this young girl using her dreams, her talents, holding it hostage for his own benefit. He groomed her. He wasn't no father. There was no father figure to her, bruh. Beyond that, 50 Cent wants to show Diddy's claimed wrongdoing and also give the money from it to people who have been sexually assaulted. And even though Diddy denied the claims, 50 Cent is still determined to bring attention to the charges against the bad boy founder. Yeah, you know, look, when you see, I kind of see myself in these guys, bro. Like, they've even made some of the mistakes I've made. And I'm going, oh, shit. I, I I know why you made the mistake, bro. Like, you understand? Like, and it's just coming out of the environment and the difference in, in peer group. Like, if you look at artists who were peers, they're making a mistake right now and not being penalized for it because they're not registering the same way. It, and, and they need someone who's already been there that can tell them to can help them weather that. Because that storm is too much for them to, in the beginning. So you look at it. Because people I, don't even know what is true anymore, it seems, in a lot of look. ways. But everyone knows what, <laughs> what's <is. laughs> Everyone knows 50 is 50, and that's, you know, yeah, that's and it. You go on, if, if there's a, I wouldn't want it to be any other way either. Meanwhile, just recently, a lot of women have come forward to say that Combs sexually assaulted them. The most recent accusation comes from a lawsuit made by Cassandra Ventura, who says she was sexually assaulted and abused for 10 long years by none other than Diddy Combs. Whew, in a statement, she said, after years in silence and darkness, I'm finally ready to tell my story. She's speaking up on behalf of herself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. With the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, she said it then became clear it was the opportunity to either speak up about the trauma she's experienced and she'll be recovering from for the rest of her life or just kind of remain silent. So she chose to speak up. What are the allegations exactly? 
It just says uh, that he, uh, he did a bunch of stuff that he allegedly, allegedly uh-huh. gave her copious amounts of drugs leading to a painful struggle with drug and alcohol abuse that he controlled every aspect of her life. He is accused of frequently beating her and would hide her in hotel rooms for days until the bruising and signs of abuse were gone and that he also allegedly forced her to have sex with male sex workers while he watched. Jesus. Mm-mm. Male sex workers what? Yeah. I, it sounded watching? like hired some prostitutes and then watched them, you know. Yikes. Do that thing. Mm-mm. I mean, those are some serious allegations. You know, Cassie is entitled to file her lawsuit, and uh, Diddy is entitled to due process. That's why these situations, you know, should play out in uh, court and, and not the court of public opinion. And I know everybody wants to have the hot take on this situation, but the reality is we don't know. No. We right. don't know what's true and what's not true, so you got to let things play out. But what I will say, when you see situations like this, don't laugh or celebrate what you think is a person's downfall or be quick to dismiss someone's claims. Mm. Just let things play out. According to the court documents that 50 Cent has talked about, Diddy was also interested in seeing Cassie do sexual things with other guys. Even Cassie herself says that she was given a lot of drugs like ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol before and during these meetings. Because she was given too many drugs, she said she often needed IV water to help her recover. Cassie also claims that Diddy insisted on managing many parts of her life, such as making her carry his gun in her purse. I got something to say about this because I want to make it very clear in this moment. Cassie, I will advocate for you. No different than I did for Jennifer Huff. I will advocate for you. Because, see, I know something that a lot of people don't know. I know that you and Kim Porter had a sit-down right before she left us. Tell him. Tell him. Please, tell him. And I know Kim had some very good advice to give you. And I believe that that this is why things are happening as they're happening now. Kim was smart, wasn't she, Cassie? Kept you alive and kept you safe. I will advocate for you. I'm with the shits. Fuck honeycomb. But you are a victim. And I know that. Congratulations on surviving and congratulations on standing up. I'll advocate for you. Fuck that pussy. And his little fucking dog. According to 50 Cent, Diddy is said to have told her more than once to hold his gun, which made her afraid and added to his image of being violent and powerful. However, 50 Cent indicates that Cassie's lawsuit was still missing some information and that Diddy had other men involved in the freak-offs. But 50 says he will bring everything to the table, no matter what it takes. You carry that much of the energy from the street into music culture, then expect shit that happens to the street to happen in music culture. It's, it's why we get more hip hop homicides. I did a series on We TV, Hip Hop Homicides, and since the show went into production, there's a whole new season of fresh cases that, that you could do for next season. But as we've grown and expanded at the same time, we're getting a lot more casualties and more things are taking place. It's about going back into the environments that we come from. We don't want to be new people. We just want to be the people we are in a better situation. There is still no clear link between Cassie's experiences and those with the rappers named, but 50 Cent is working harder to find out more about Diddy's questionable behavior. For now, he has included Jay-Z in the story, which suggests that Diddy and Jay-Z's close friendship may have some shady sides that have not been revealed. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts with him. So even though Diddy and Jay-Z are known to be close friends, 50 Cent suggests that some things are going on behind the scenes that might change how people see their relationship. Currently, 50 Cent has also been trolling and putting pressure on Diddy. At this point, it looks like the ongoing controversy is about to get even more complicated with 50 Cent revealing more and more information by the day. That's all for the video. Do you think 50 Cent will be coming forward with more of these exposés? 
let us know in the comments below. To catch us again, hit the bell icon.